All right, we're back. Black Fatherhood Legacy Podcast. My name is Jay Cortez Thomas, and we have... What's happening? I'm Dave Huff. Dave Huff is back in the building again, people, and we have a different topic that we are addressing today because this month happens to be a month that we are uh, recognizing uh, disparities in miscarriages in um, the black community. And um, and so I wanted to kind of pull this these stats up or these findings um, to kind of bring um, an idea of why this is so uh, talked about, especially in, in this month. Uh, almost one in three stillbirths um, did not have a cause or specified. Stillbirth rates are were higher in uh, the southern United States. Black mothers were more like more than twice as likely to experience stillbirth compared to Hispanic or white mothers. Health problems that occurred during pregnancy or underlying health conditions were listed as a cause of stillbirth three, three times more often in, in black mothers than white mothers. Uh, improvements in women's health with regular access to quality parental care can potentially reduce the risk of stillbirth in women and families. So this is a, this is kind of the reason why we're having this discussion. Um, but this discussion is happening nationwide right now because of the month and what's happening, but this discussion is only happening in the spaces with women. Yeah. This is probably the only space that most of you guys are gonna come across that men are talking about this specific thing that's, con- that's taking place. And the reason why I wanted to address it as men is because it is very underrepresented in the black male community is how we feel about what takes place with this because Um, it's always from a woman's perspective, which is totally understood. We're not negating what a woman has to go through, what the feelings that she has, the, uh, we're not negating any of that. Like that is valid, but it's also valid how the man feels. And I think that men need to, there needs to be a voice out there for men who have these certain feelings and things that are happening to them during this time as well. So, um, I'll start with myself. This was a topic that it really wasn't brought up. Like, I never heard too much about it. Like, yeah. when I was um, a young married man, I knew I wanted to have children. And I knew I wanted to have a family. And then, as you know, like, we had people around us having kids, yeah, like, yeah. a lot. Like, yeah. so, uh, I think we we were the last two in the crew to get married. Uh, Floyd was the last. Floyd was the last one. Yeah. So, of the, well, the main crew, yes. Yeah. But of, like, yeah, that, yeah. like like Mike and yeah, Mike and, and JB and all those JB. guys and yeah. so there was a lot of other guys out that we were still cool with out, yeah. outside of our little four circle yeah. Yeah. that were having children and raising families and doing all these things yeah. and so of course you want that for yourself you know so um but I never it, this never got brought yeah. up like um this or you just something gonna happen this or even um uh uh, infertility. Yeah, yeah. You don't hear that. Like you don't. That's not. That doesn't come up in conversation. Yeah. That's not something that gets Instagrammed, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, um, why are you putting it down low? You don't spark a conversation on that. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, man. You know, by the way, uh, I'm having trouble having a child. Like, yeah. you know, nobody, nobody says that. And so, because nobody says it, I think a lot of the time it, you feel isolated, alienated, and alone. Like yeah. this is your problem, or. Nobody else is going through this because no one talks about it, right? So um, that's how kind of I felt with it because when it happened to me, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't feel like I could talk to anybody. I felt like it was a me thing going through it and nobody. And the problem with that was is I really I had real feelings about it that I felt like were suppressed. Yeah, yeah. And um and so uh you know like a good friend of ours went through a whole um uh, uh infertility yes. issue uh-huh. and we got to see that from a bird's eye view but a lot of it wasn't really discussed yeah, verbally yeah. and like now I kind of look back like I think it was I just didn't want to pry or didn't want to like yeah that was something that was like very personal to them. It was like, yeah, okay, yeah. do I it's just, a hard time. do I just yeah. say something or yeah. do I, you know? So I, I didn't really say anything. But when it happened to me, not the infertility, but more of the miscarriage, it was tough. Like I literally, 
our first attempt, like we were like, okay, we're gonna have a child. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. We were like, about to have a child. Yeah. Okay, let's start. So we doing the whole charts and you know, you yeah, do yeah. everything and ovulation periods yeah. and the, and the time to go. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we did all of that and God had another plan. He said, first go, that's it. <laughs> so the first go, yeah. literally, my wife got pregnant. Yeah. Like, yeah. and so. Uh, it was like, wow, okay. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I, my period, I missed my period. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, let's check it out and go yeah. to the doctor and find out. She's pregnant. She's yeah. like, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So, yeah, excitement starts to come in. And then you're like, well, we named the child. And then yeah. you're like, talking to your parents. Yeah. And then you're yeah. telling your friends. And you're doing all of these things. Yeah. And the excitement builds up. And then it was a gut punch when my wife started having complications. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't foresee this happening, number one. Two, I had just told everybody. Yeah. So I was like, in the back of my mind, like, what if? Yeah. And I didn't want to have those feelings, and I didn't want to think that, but like, in the back of my mind, because my wife was really feeling like that, she was coming to me saying, like, I'm really feeling like, Something's wrong here. Like yeah. this, that, and the other. And I was just like, well, okay. So we, we ended up taking a trip to see my parents. And while we were there on the on the trip, she started having some pains and some feelings. We took her to the hospital. And we literally got the news that night yeah. that our kid ain't gonna make it. Yeah. And you talk about tough. Bro, like it was hard, and I was like, but as a man, like I handled it so wrong. Like now looking back, my wife needed me at that time. Like she needed me as a rock. Like she needed me, and I was like that for the first maybe couple of days with it. But like my real feelings started to come in, where I was like feeling depressed and down and out, and you know not knowing how to handle people's the conversation with people now because they're like, hey, what's up with your kid? Like you know, like. I didn't know, and so when they ask the questions, not knowing. Yeah, so I like pulled away from my wife and kind of isolated myself, yeah. as opposed to being the rock that she needed at that time. Yeah, yeah. And it was really tough on our marriage because after it happened, she voiced how she felt during that time to me, but not yeah. during the time that it was going on. And so it was kind of tough on me to hear that like you weren't there, like you didn't, yeah, yeah. you know, and. Uh, so I will say to any man like out there, like it, their wife needs, like they need you in that time. They need you to be emotionally, physically, yeah. everything there, like present and with them going through it because it's tough. Yeah. I think the only thing I, I, I tried to do, which I did was I stepped in financially where I told her she don't have to work yeah. during that time. I was like, take as much time as you want. And she took almost a year off yeah. and, uh, it was like that. I felt like I took a bit of the burden off and let her, you know, this, uh, but I, I was almost letting her do it all on her own, like emotionally get through that yeah, at home yeah. as opposed to being the support, the support and the ride. Yeah. So I kind of, to this day, I regret. That's one of the things that I regret not doing, yeah, but yeah. also um, in regret, you, off, you often know now what not to do. So like yeah. now when my wife is going through something emotionally, I'm not disconnected. I'm very yeah, connected yeah. to what, because I know that she was yeah, yeah. Not at that time. Yeah. And, um, but I just, the stigma around it, we, her and I had the conversation of, we started to find out as we reached out to people that this was a normal thing, that yeah. this happens all the time. And it's happened to people that we didn't even know it had happened to. Yeah. So it was just like, okay, well, we were over here feeling isolated and, you know, alone when we could have not felt that way. Yeah. And so, like, that's why I wanted I wanted to make sure I did this, this one podcast out of all the ones we did this season because you're not alone. Like, this is something that happens to a lot of people. If you look at the statistics I just read, yeah. it happens a lot. It's not an Instagrammable moment. Yeah. So Instagram, Facebook, text messages, 
whatever you get from people is a highlight reel of the best things that are happening in their life and they don't want to show this because it's one of the worst and hardest things they have to go through yeah, yeah. and so people tend to hide it and they tend to kind of alienate themselves away from people while it's happening yeah. almost to brush it under the rug as if it's not happening yeah, yeah. but it is and i feel like we need to stop doing that especially yeah. in the black community because we need to let other people know that yeah like, bro, I'm here. Like, I went through that too. Yeah. So you can lean on me. What do you, yeah. you know, if you have questions, what's up? Like, yeah. I've been through that. Yeah. You know, where I don't think we do that. I think we, you know, we celebrate life, but we don't celebrate the learning things in life, the things yeah. that teach you things. Like, yeah. these are teaching moments, right? And yeah. so it's like, we don't celebrate the fact that we are have overcome so yeah. much yeah. in this that's a, a lot to overcome yeah. to overcome yeah. that is a is a celebratory thing in itself yeah. I, but we don't celebrate those things we only celebrate yeah. or at least acknowledge them yeah, yeah. We, don't, we only celebrate the good stuff yeah. you know yeah. so it's like um i don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, i mean i agree i mean with that i know it's something kind of like to hop right into it no warm up uh but going through that we had two stillborns uh, one in 2010, then another one in 2012. It came out of nowhere. Uh, uh, typically, they say when it comes to pregnancy, the first four months are risky. That's where a whole lot of things can happen. But at the same time, once you make it to week 20, you're fine, mm -hmm. or, or, or the risk they start to decrease. So as far as us in our situation, and I'll speed through it real quick as far as the timeline. So as far as us in our situation, it was a week 20, or sorry for like, no, week 18, we're good. Week 19, week 20, we're good. All of a sudden, uh, my wife, she starts spotting. And then uh, make a long story short on this one, it was a, a miscarriage or stillborn. Me, I'm calling Children's Hospital trying to figure out what's going to happen. And they say, no, I'm sorry, myself, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. It's, it just happens. Uh, but like I said, even with that process, there are sights and there are smells that I can't get out of my head to this day. So, and, and that's the tough part of shooting this mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. uh, still, even when a woman has a stillborn, what many people don't know, uh, they still have to deliver mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the tough part. So as a husband, it's like, you can't do anything. No, nothing. And, and a woman, they, they have to literally deliver a, a, a dead baby, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a husband, it's like, yes, you're, you're going through a whole lot of stuff. You're there. You want to be there to support her. But at the same time, it's almost just a, you want to be selfless, put your emotions aside, take care of her, meet all of her needs. But while at the same time, that's also a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Because if you put your emotions aside, then what are you doing to deal with them? Uh, and for me, I had to find several outlets, listening to weights, playing basketball. Uh, a lot of times people ask, like, you know, oh, so how's the pregnancy going? Mm -hmm. And then it's a reminder. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like talking about it, but every time you explain it, it's a reminder. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so of course, my wife, she was hurting. Uh, a couple months go by, I didn't want to talk about it, trying again. A year go by, I didn't want to talk about it. Uh, roughly a year and a half went by, we spoke about it and we tried again. So here it is again. We're, we're on week 15, 17, 19. 20 is the most nervous one. And then we hit uh, week uh, 21. And uh, so the first one was a girl, the second one was a boy. Uh, we were trying to discuss names for him. We didn't have a name for, for the second one. So uh, but at the same time, like I said, we hit week 20, and then we, we think we're in the clear. We hit week 21, I'm at work. My wife gives me a call. Uh, she tells me, no, Dave, you need to hurry up and come home. I'm experiencing the same thing. Uh, and it sucked because uh, as I'm driving home, I see a ambulance in the distance. And as I make a right, it makes a right, I make a right. It makes a left, I make a left. So from a distance, I see where it's going and I know where it's going. And like I said, it's another site. You can't get out of your head. Uh, uh, images I don't want to explain in depth. Like I said, those are things that are just like very different. Mm -hmm. So uh, still with that one, that was suck because like I said, you're a week 20, week 21, you're excited. All of a sudden, boom, your life changes. We didn't even have a name for it. We just like, just call me. Mm -hmm. and, and it kind of sucked because it's like, just call a major, like, okay, whatever. Right. And the same thing had to deliver. So, like I said, with that one, it was tough. Uh, and, and when you're going through it, it's unfortunate because then again, you got to bear your emotions because you got to cater towards your wife as a husband. You got to fold her. Uh, 
there was one part where I had to be truthful to where I told my wife, I'm like, well, you know, uh, you're not the only one married. Like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much your pain cushion because here it is, I'm supporting you, but what about me? Uh, I'm doing this for you, what about me? Uh, you're not the only one hurting, I'm hurting as well. The first one's a girl, here it is a boy, I was looking forward to it. And now we don't have it. We have, everything has to be about you. So, and then my wife, she understood it. Uh, again, like I said, as a husband, I was tough to speak up and say that because you know that she's hurting him. Right, right. So the last thing you want to do is say something to hurt her even more. Right, right. Because uh, just knowing my wife, I know that she'll quickly take the emotions off of herself and then uh, beat herself up even more. And right. it's not my job to say anything to beat herself up even more. Right, right. And so like I said, I mean, it was challenging uh, with that knowing, okay, we know I've experienced it for a reason. And in hindsight, like, you know, uh, there's more people that go through it. So now that we discuss those things with people, uh, you don't go around advertising it because mm -hmm. it's almost like a sense of embarrassment. Mm -hmm. um, you don't go around uh, 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 poking at it, getting somebody to talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you hear somebody that went through it, it's like, hey, man, if you need anything, just let me know. And, and yeah, so, that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with it, man. It's kind of, it's, you were the only one I knew at the time. Mm -hmm. Like you were the only person I knew at the time that had gone through it. And I didn't reach out to you at the time. Yeah. Cause I did feel like a sense of embarrassment right. in a sense, in that way. Because um just like you said, the images that you can't get out of your head, yeah. my wife still had to deliver that baby. You know, and um seeing that, it was tough, bro, yeah. like tough. Cause yeah. you're just like, I mean, we didn't we didn't um we didn't um I believe that was I believe he was a boy. Yeah. Um but like you said, no name, you know, yeah, like yeah. no no nothing for the kid yet. And um uh, the second one and the second um pregnancy was tough because just like you said, you have expectations yeah, already yeah. set in your mind yeah. and you're like, I don't wanna tell nobody nothing yeah. so it was like almost a secret that we were pregnant and I didn't want it to be like that but um, it wasn't until you were there at yeah. my daughter's birthday party yeah yeah right um, because at that point you know you reached that that, that my wife showing almost 20 weeks yeah, like yeah. you know we felt like okay we can yeah, yeah. you know but even then, my wife, the whole time, she was just like, any feeling, anything, yeah, was just, it thing. was like, and it was just me going back in my mind again, yeah, like, yeah. oh, here we, here we yeah, go again, yeah. kind of thing, as yeah. opposed to having that optimistic, like, this is going to be all right, yeah, kind of thing, yeah. like, it was more of like, what am I gonna like? What do I have to do to make this thing work this time? You know, so it was just like, and and, and that's the hard part too, even. Uh, there's times people make comments, right, if it's intentional or unintentional, and it's like, well, what happened? Hell, I don't know what happened, what right. me? So at the same time, it's like people, they want to come and help, but sometimes their help can be hurtful at the same time. Uh, and I remember like one boy, uh, Will, the first one, Will, he didn't even, uh, he didn't say anything. He just came over, just hung out at the house, and just watched him just quiet. And that was it. So, in a lot of times, uh, just the company, uh, there's a moment where something needs to be said. There are plenty of moments where nothing needs to be said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I think uh, 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 when it comes to being a expecting parent, especially as a male, uh, be don't don't bury your emotions with that. You gotta have an outlet. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about it. Talk about it with your time in. Uh, thankfully now I'm happy because I have three healthy children. Yeah. Uh, we knew what was going on. Uh, it was one of the kind of things where, so, so earlier on my wife, uh, a cervical cancer, or she had to be treated for, for symptoms of cervical cancer. So what they said, we well, you know, well, let's freeze a cervix, take off a piece of it, and then examine it. But each time they froze it, they said, well, you know, the risk is your cervix will get weakened. So basically what happened with the first baby, the baby got too heavy, cervix got weakened, the baby came down. Same thing, second baby, baby got too, too heavy, the cervix up and the baby came down. So it's like, all right, well, we did these things prior for our health. What do we do? How do you move forward? So my wife, she's a bookworm. 
uh, pretty much uh, what she ended up doing was having a, a, a abdominal surclass uh, put in. And abdominal surclass is basically they go through your abdominal, uh, you have your, cir- your, uh, your, your cervix, and they stitch your shut. And it's a permanent band that stays there. Uh, so that way you can carry the baby full term. But each pregnancy or delivery is now a C-section. So when we had an eye up, and the blessings with this one, so when the first one happened in 2010, Two years later, 2012, it happened. We didn't even leave the hospital yet. And my wife was like, we're trying to get yeah. And that was like a sigh of relief. I didn't want to talk about it. Right, right. So the entire pregnancy of the night, of course, in the back of my head, I'm like, is this thing going to work? Is this going to work? Is this going to work? And then she's delivered. Yeah. So, of course, you relax that way. Uh, a guy comes in. She's born. Josiah comes in. He's born. But at the same time, there's always those conversations. We see those three running around. Just wondering what it would be like if it was those five. Uh, or I think in the first one, Olivia was her name. Mm-hmm. Thinking of the first one, okay, well, she would have been 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Second one, Angel, he would have been 10. Or what I've been like, we have five kids to three. Yeah. So it's always those thoughts there that are hurtful. We can go through it, it hurts. Uh, I'm not giving a lie, there's no way to ban the shit. Uh, there's sights, smells, sounds that you can't get out of your head. Uh, I could be walking down the street to see something. I could literally go into uh, Walmart and see a little baby dog. Mm-hmm. And just the texture of it, it's a reminder. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the sad part. That's the unfortunate part. But like I said, once we go to it, uh, I had a, a, a apartment manager. She told me she had the same thing happen to her. And she said, you never get over it. You just find ways to deal with it. Yeah. And, and when she told me that, that was like the, uh, the eye-opening moment. Like, I know I'll never get over it. Just each day will get easier and easier and, and acceptable. Yeah. So. And I think, too, just the more and more I've talked about it with people yeah. who've gone through it made it feel better because I felt like not isolated alone. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, somebody shared in that pain with you. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, okay. Because the, the aloneness of it is kind of the hard, one of the hardest parts yeah, about it. True. Because I'll be honest, I was being a little jerk face to a lot of people at that time because I wouldn't go around people with kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, the funny thing about it, so you know my career at recreation. Yeah. yeah. So I'm working at the rec center. And it was so frustrating because here it is. It's like, you know, I'm taking care of other people's kids. And I was angry at God. Because the thing is, like, you know, I'm constantly watching other people's kids. Everybody around me getting pregnant. Why can't I have my own? And now that was the most frustrating part, and it angered me. Uh, and the thing is, like, you know, guy, he has no problem with us getting anger. He tells us to question him. The only thing he says is that in our anger, do not sin. Mm-hmm. Uh, was I mad at God? I'm not going to say I was mad at him. I wasn't mad at him, excuse me, but I, but I questioned why. Why? Uh, I'm constantly doing these things here. Why? So now the biggest why that was in my head to this day. Um, now I don't ask a question why. If anything, in hindsight, it's that knowing that I've experienced it, I can help the next person. And I, and I, I believe that, you know, because we both believers, yeah. and, and, and I believe that God has ironed out everything in our lives yeah. to make us more like his son, yeah. right? And so what we see at the time as being so... I can't get over this. This is tough. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. God uses it for his glory. Because right now we're sitting here having a conversation to men around the country about miscarriage because we went through it. And had we not gone through it, we can't speak to that guy who's right now probably listening, who's going through it and having those sights and smells. And, And now he has somebody to relate to. And so it's like God always uses what we feel like is the worst stuff. Yeah, he yeah. makes the best out of it, you know. Yeah. So it's like, but I was a jerk face. I didn't go around kids. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I didn't want to go around nobody kids. I was like, yeah. that's cool. Especially if there was newborns and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like it yeah. was like, okay, yeah, hi, yeah. see you, yeah. kid. You know, but it was just because, and I was, and I apologize to the people that probably felt like that, but they just didn't know what I was going through. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and I didn't want to be like, yeah. you know, this is what I'm going through, and um, you know, but. I look at between us, we got we got five today. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 
they're all close in age. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, the last two are eight months apart, both of them. Yeah, yeah. We did not plan that, by the way. <laughs> but it's just like she, I don't feel like you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, yeah, you, know, oh, you know, like I wasn't like that. Yeah. And it's funny too because the last, the last two were girls. I mean, yeah. the last, the second to last were girls, and the last were boys. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so uh, we, we both wanted, you know, at least one boy, and then, yeah, you know, yeah. there it is. And so. You know, God, God blesses. He's still through the through the dark times, and you know, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to shed light on. I, I don't want to make this seem like it's all, yeah. all, all down. Like, it is. It, 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 is. Yeah. It, 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 there is that downtime, but God gets you through it, and whatever He takes you to, you know, um, I won't speak names because I just don't. But yeah. a, a buddy of ours who. Uh, God did a miracle in his life. Yeah, he, yeah. They they couldn't have that quote unquote can't have no more children. Yeah, I get you. I get you. When he got adopted a kid, the next thing you know, she pregnant. And yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like you know, um, God does. He does. The miracles are still here, man. Yeah, God yeah. still performs miracles, and keep your faith in Him. Yeah. Allow your um, don't allow outside yeah. noise and people and. They're not dealing with that situation. That's you and that woman. Yeah, yeah. And if you have kids already or if you don't, that's y'all's thing to get through. Yeah. But like Dave said, make sure you have outlets yeah. to get, whether it's just to go play basketball, just yeah. to go hang out, just to whatever. Like you said, what Will did, I believe I think I did the same thing with you. And I don't recall you even knowing at the time, but I just came because I just wanted to be yeah, yeah. around. Like, it wasn't necessarily... You had to say anything or I had to even tell you what was going on with yeah. me. It's just like, bro, like yeah. we can laugh yeah, about yeah. grilled cheese and toast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so, what's your and by the way, before I get off this podcast, I'm gonna say look, well, oh, I was watching Instagram the other day <laughs> and I sent it to Will too. So Will actually so my roommate Will and, and, and him and we're all friends. I was in college, I was uh uh, broke college student had some bread, cheese. I wanted a grilled cheese sandwich. My, my roommate just said bought a toaster, and I said I can make grilled cheese with a toaster. I probably could. Like it makes sense if the cheese melts in between, that it's gonna pop up, right? The bread popped up, cheese came down. But the other day, saw on Instagram a lady showed how you could do it the right way. Uh, but what did she use? Though? A tortilla, man. <laughs> no, that's just Mexican bread. <laughs> <laughs> she folded it from that <laughs> yeah, that, That's a big difference. <laughs> this is the Black Father Legacy Podcast. We'll see you on the next episode with HJ Cortez. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>